everyone, I'm Vanessa and today I'm here to do the spooky book tag. This tag was created by Maddie from The Book Pusher like years ago, back in 2016, but I was excited to realize that I have not done it yet. I will leave Maddie's original video linked down below in case you want to check it out. And other than that, I'm going to go ahead and get started on these spooky questions. The first question is Corn Maze. What book had you confused from the very beginning? Listen, <laughs> I had no idea what was like going on. This is a sci-fi dystopian bio biopunk, I guess, situation. And I think a lot of my problem had to do with the fact that I was reading this for school and my English teacher only gave us like f four days to freaking read it. I'm sorry, but like four days, I'm skimming this and I'm not getting it. The second question is Haunted House and that is a book with the creepiest setting. And for me personally, based on like my own personal, what creeps me out, I think the creepiest setting I've encountered in a book was probably uh, Station Eleven, by Emily St. John Mandel. And I know that this is not meant to be like a horror novel. This isn't supposed to be a scary book. It's like a touching literary story about the arts and what makes life worth living. But it's an apocalypse setting where like after a pandemic, society is gone. You cannot deal with like the apocalyptic, you know, there's no more society, no more civilization. There's nowhere to go for safety. No one you can call, no one you can depend on. That's also why another one that has a really creepy setting to me is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. No, I can't do it. The third question is ghost boyfriend. Who is your eternal fictional boyfriend? And I know for me personally, I've been kind of over the concept of book boyfriends for a while now. And I think a lot of other people are too, but let me tell you who I am keeping and no one can come at me for this because he is a grown ass man who has been my eternal video game boyfriend for over a decade now. And that is Colin Rutherford from Dragon Age. <laughs> I played Dragon Age for the first time when I was like 18. And in the first game, he's like some nobody side character. He has like five lines. When you play a mage origin story, like you have to pass this test to prove that you're a good enough mage or whatever. And if you don't pass it, you get beheaded by a Templar because you're dangerous. The like little side story story in this or again it only lasts for like two minutes and it's not even a big part of the game but Colin is like a Templar that's like assigned to guard the mages and he comes up to you afterward shy as hell because he has a crush on you but he tells you that he was the Templar that had been assigned to behead you if you didn't pass your test and he's clearly like having a freaking emotional crisis over this and when I tell you a simp was born that day. He appears briefly in the second game for like a side quest and he was very ugly. But then in Dragon Age Inquisition, what do they do to me? What does Bioware do? They make him a full ass romanceable party member? Why would they do that to me? You can marry him in Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> and this is what he looks like. And he has a freaking fur cape. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesse actually just started playing Inquisition for the first time the other day and he was like that Colin guy who's on your war council seems really boring and like a basic ass frat bro and I was like ready to fight. <laughs> Anyways, um, question number four is caramel suckers which are the best Halloween candy. So of course the question is, what is the best dang Halloween book? This is a very hard question for me because there are so many different things that would make something the best Halloween book. Like I didn't know what route I wanted to go, but I think I'm gonna go with the books that I've read around Halloween that left the most like impression on me as just being like really fun, really festive. You know, that's like what Halloween is about to me. It's about being spooky and fun. So Born Wicked by Jessica Spotswood. This is so good. It's like about, witches and feminism and it's set in like this really cool kind of historical fiction setting but almost like an alternative history where the time periods are like it's very puritan salem witch trials but it's set in like i want to say the 1800s like they have trains and stuff so i don't know it's just really really cool and another one that i just fell head over heels in love with and has always stuck with me is the name of the star by maureen johnson this whole series it's so good it's about this american girl who in ends up going to a boarding school in London. 
I didn't need any more than that, to be honest. But while she's there, she has a near-death experience and then she can see ghosts and like talk to ghosts and stuff. And she ends up hooking up with this like ghost hunter crew who are like the FBI, but they hunt ghosts. And it's just like, man, it's just so fun. Like I wish I was reading this book right now. Question number five is vampires in everything. What is your least favorite Halloween trope? I think for me, it's like gore and like just stabby like slasher stuff. I'm not super into that. But question number five is pumpkin in everything and that is your favorite Halloween trope. And for me it's the supernatural. Anything that's like kind of magical or kind of ghosty and mysterious, things like that. I really love gothic vibes too. Anything that's like oh a foggy old gray mansion where no one lives or there's like a creepy groundskeeper, like that kind of stuff really, yeah. That's what I'm here for during the Halloween. <laughs> Question number six is evil incarnate, the most evil villain. I couldn't pick. Honestly, villains never really, this is blasphemy I think on booktube, but I'm not like a person that is impressed upon by the villain. Like usually after I read a book, I only have like a very vague memory of who the villain was and what their whole deal was. But can we talk about Count Olaf? <laughs> this man was literally ready to murder several children for money. <laughs> and you know what? I don't even think he needed that money. He clearly had enough to be affording all these wacky costumes and shenanigans and he literally gets himself into all of these like jobs and positions and people believe him and they don't believe the orphans. Man if you are this charismatic and sneaky and tricky I'm pretty sure you could just like con a bank robbery or something like you do not need to murder these orphans. <laughs> the next question is Ouija board and that is a book that messes with things you don't want to be involved in. Um, my best friend's exorcism for me. Demonic possession? Mm -mm. Those are like the scary movies that really messed me up the most as a teenager. And even to this day, I am like really cautious before I watch a possession movie because it's just something that is so scary to me and I just don't want to be like involved in this situation. Like paranormal activity. When it was just a ghost haunting their house, I was like, hell yeah, this is fun. But then the moment they were like, never mind, it's a demon trying to possess you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> the next question is full moon. What character do you turn into on the full moon? And for me, the full moon, I usually get like just an abundance of excess weird energy. So I'm gonna say Mina Harker from Dracula because she is just a boss ass bitch. She's getting shit done. She's organizing everyone's entire life. She's just really out here being like the most productive Virgo that I have ever seen in my life. And as a Virgo moon, I think that on a full moon, I would be her. The next question is All Hallows Eve, the other world and this world have meshed for one night. What book world would you love to be swept up in? I don't have an answer to this question because I missed it when I was writing them down, so this is this is off the dome here. A Sorcery of Thorns. Yes, a magical Victorian setting where libraries are like magical and the highest freaking thing in the land and um there's sorcerers and people can just be bisexual and it's totally fine. And librarians get to carry swords. The next question is voodoo doll. What author would you love to take control of and make them write anything you want? I love this question this year, Maddie, because you know I'm gonna possess JK Rowling and make her write like a letter of resignation of some kind where she just signs over all of her money and all of her rights and all of her involvement with the Harry Potter franchise to someone who's not a giant piece of human garbage. The next question is black cat. What red flags do you look for when first starting out a book. Um, hokey dialogue is one that really just gets me. Like if the dialogue is hokey, I know that I'm not going to enjoy this right off the bat. And also like an overly edgy writing style, you know, where you can tell the author is like, oh, look at me. I'm a bad boy. My characters uh, smoke cigarettes and have black hair and stab people. And it's like, yeah, I was like 14 in the early 2000s too. I had an emo face. I get it. The last question is Witch's Brew, and that is a book that had a lot of different components thrown in, but the result was magical. And for this, I want to talk about a book I read last month, which was Eventide by Sarah Goodman. It was so good, and it has so much going on. It's like a historical fiction. It's set in the early 1900s in rural Arkansas, but it's also a mystery story. Like, the main character is definitely uncovering this mystery and like going through the process of finding clues and following up leads and stuff like that. But it's also a a horror 
novel. Like there's some scary ghosts and there's like a freaking well. Okay, anything with like a well and little girls. No ma'am, that's scary. But it's also like a fantasy. Like there's just some cool magic and like some enchanted objects and stuff like that. And it's, I don't know, it had a lot and all of it was done so well. So that is it for the spooky book tag, which I have finally done four years later. Thank you, Maddie, for making such an awesome and perfect Halloween tag. And I am going to tag everyone who is participating in Spooktober in any way, shape, or form. If you're doing Spooktober, I tag you to do this tag. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I get to talk to you soon. Bye!